So what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a 2019 Ram 1500 Rebel. Now this truck has 86,000 miles on it. You heard me right, just a little bit over 86,000. So today I have my trailer. I don't know if you guys can see it behind me. I'm at a truck stop, not in the same spot I'm normally at. So big shout out to Chris for allowing me to look at this truck and actually hook up a trailer to it. So we're gonna go ahead and see all the hardware that's available for this truck. I'm gonna show you all the optional equipment inside of here. So if you are buying a Ram truck or just like any other truck, a lot of these towing features are optional. So I'm gonna show you some of the things that came available for this truck and we'll go ahead and take it on the road to tow it. It's 36 degrees outside, so it's really cold. I got my gloves on today. Let's get into it. Now, if you do buy a Ram truck, they do have what's called a trailer tow group available. Now, as you can see, you have these goofy tow mirrors. I always say the mirrors that come on the half tons are pretty adequate, especially for Ram because I have a 2020 Ram 1500. I have the standard mirrors. They do have the power function. As you guys can see here, this truck does not have the power function because of the fact that it has these tow mirrors. So I recommend to skip these, but if you do get that package, it does give you the tow mirrors and it comes with a trailer brake too. So a trailer brake will be optional for Ram trucks, just like I believe every other half ton truck and heavy duty trucks for that fact. Those are two things on this truck that we have. And as you guys can see, I have my hitch on there. I'm way off center. I didn't even try to back up in front of the trailer, but let me go ahead and turn these off. Cool. Now, I don't know why this camera is kind of fuzzy. I don't know over time, maybe a little bit of dust got in there. It just needs to be clean, but it's just a little unclear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull forward. We're gonna hook this bad boy up and we'll see how easy it is off this camera. So as you guys can see too, there is no 12 inch display. That is an option. And I was going through some of my videos. I never did a walk around review on a Rebel. So I have to find a new one, maybe for 2021, I'll do that for you. So this camera is pretty accurate. So let's see if we can zoom in and boom, perfect. So now we're gonna hit the uh, parking brake right here. It is electric. I prefer actually have the pull for on. I do not like electrical parking brakes, but a lot of cars and trucks are starting to go with that. I hope the heavy duty trucks never uh, catch on. So let's go ahead and go outside and take a look at everything. All right guys, so as you can see, the hitch is right under the ball. Now this is gonna be a Reese hitch, and this is gonna be good for 14,000 pounds for the two and five sixteenth ball. This truck does come with a class four receiving hitch, so this is gonna be two inches. I already have it locked in here. Now, this design for the receiving hitch, I don't like it because my chains for my trailer is really big. So getting these chains in here sometimes can be a challenge. So we're gonna go ahead and hook everything up and I'll show you guys a few other things on the truck. Now for 2019, Ram did redesign this Ram. So this is a fifth gen. It came with a 5.7 liter V8. It's good for 395 horsepower, 410 pound feet of torque has an eight speed transmission, eight HP 75. And if you get a Rebel, the Rebels come standard with a 392 axle. So that's one thing I love about the Rebel is it already has a lot of the things that you would want, especially the 392 for towing. You can get an e-torque motor and that's gonna give you supplemental power, you know, when you're going to launch it. So that's gonna give you best towing capacity. Now, this truck has a lot of options that come standard. So check out this interior. I love, love, love the Rebels. I'm surprised I haven't done a review on one yet. I did do a review a while ago. I never posted the footage because I didn't like it, but I do like this truck's setup. I love the red accents on the doors and on the seats. It's just a really nice truck. Like even down here, looks really nice. So let's go ahead and take a look at the payload number on the door. All right, so let's go ahead and look at these numbers first. So. The gross axle weight rating in the front of this truck is going to be 3,900 pounds. The rear is 4,100 pounds. You do have a 7,100 pound GVWR. All in 
payload capacity is going to be 1,643 pounds. So this truck has a pretty good payload with all the options that you can kind of see. Now you can get a panoramic sunroof. This truck does not have a spray and bed liner. So that's going to help increase the payload on this truck too. You can get a 12 inch display and I really the e-torque is probably going to reduce the payload because you're adding more components because there's like a battery pack behind the seat here so just keep that in mind also all right guys I don't know if you can see that but this is 39 and a quarter all right so let's go ahead and drop the truck down here and we'll see what it drops down to So what do you guys think there? Uh, I don't think that it dropped as much, but I'll be honest with you guys, this road is not as level as I'd like it to be. So when I get back, I'll pull the truck over there so you guys can see it on level ground. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, measure here, and then we'll go ahead and adjust the trailer. But before we do all of that, let's do this. So this truck does have a four pin and a seven pin connector. My trailer uses the seven pin. I've already checked all of my pins on the hitch to make sure that they're nice and secure. So that's something you always want to do. The chains do fit pretty good actually. I guess I can't complain too much about it because it looks like they won't fit, but they fit perfectly. And I've already dropped down the coupler lock here. I crossed my chains. So everything is pretty good for the most part. And the last thing I have to do is I have to add in my breakaway switch. So I'll put the camera down because it's kind of hard to do that holding this. So let's go ahead and set up the trailer brake next and then we'll go ahead and get on the road. All right guys, so here's where we are. We are at 36 and 3 fourths. So it dropped from 39 and a quarter to 36 and 3 fourths, there you go. All right guys, so I couldn't get the breakaway switch in there. So what I did was I had to put it on the frame of the hitch on the underbody. So I still don't like this design because you just can't really get much done inside of here. It's just too tight. So I wish they would just do something a little different. Now Chevy does something similar to Ram with how they allow for the chains to fit. So I would like to see them both maybe do something a little different in the future. So as you guys can see, this is a new tire for this truck. These are Goodyear Wranglers. And these are gonna be 275-70-18s. And let's take a look at the weight capacity for these tires. So as you guys can see, for a single wheel, it's gonna be 3,640 pounds. Not that it matters, but 3,305 is for dual rear wheel if you are gonna run these tires for a dually. So these are really good tires, have a lot of capacity, way more than this truck would ever need. So that's a good thing. So let's go ahead and get on the road. I just checked everything one last time and we're good to go. All right, so truck is started. Now just so you know, anytime you hook up to a trailer, this does automatically turn off your parking sensor. So you don't have to do that, but it was annoying hearing it beep as I was backing up. All right, so here is the trailer brake. So what you can do is you can go through the screen here to go to settings. Let's go to apps and then we'll go to settings and let's look for trailer. Here it is, trailer. So we have the current trailer. So we have a light electric. You can name the trailer if you like. So we'll just keep it the way it is. And your trailer brake is right here so you can set the gain right here. And if you wanna kind of see how much braking you have, let's undo this. You can pull this. Let's pull forward just a little bit. Okay, so I have enough to stop the trailer with the gain here, so that's good. All right, man, this coiled suspension. I don't know if you guys know this, but this truck does have that five link coiled suspension, just like the three quarter ton Ram trucks. But already, man, at low speeds, I can tell it's a little sturdy here. Okay. 
So we're gonna go ahead and take it out and yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing on the road. I'm actually kind of excited because so far so good. We're on the road. I forgot to show you guys tool haul mode, but I'm in tool haul mode now. Let's see how well it does. So I'm going 30 guys. I am really happy with how this is handling this trailer. Okay. Tow haul mode is holding my gears for me really good. Now this truck has 86,000 miles on it. So we'll see how well, you know, it does when we do acceleration. But right now, what I can tell you is the suspension is handling this trailer very well. And I feel really confident right now. My trailer does have spread axles. I say it in every video. So that's gonna help overall with how well it tows. And I am very in control of this trailer. Now this is the second off-road package truck that I have tested. Chevy was the first one. And what I can feel is that this suspension, maybe it was with the shocks or whatever, it's just doing a really good job of handling the weight. Now, I guess the only thing I can say is that it has to be with this tire setup or something. Tires are a big factor in how well a truck's gonna handle weight. So I really feel confident. Like I can really tell you right now that this truck is doing a good job. I'm gonna reset the fuel economy right now. And then when we get on the road, I'll give it some wide open throttle. But guys, like man, this is doing really good. Now, I did not open up the tow mirrors. I mean, I, I just don't really think that half-ton trucks should use the same tow mirrors as the heavy duties on the Ram side. They just don't look good. And you lose features to having them. So, in my opinion, I mean, you can see around this trailer really good with them down. But obviously, if you want your truck to look like a heavy-duty truck, you can flip them out. But, I don't know. I'm just really biased. I'm not going to lie. I think that these mirrors don't look good in these trucks. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get on the highway. I'm gonna show you guys another camera view so I can show you wide open throttle. All right, here we go. Wow. So, so far, the Ford truck has been the best with acceleration. All right, so right now, let's see. Wow. So there's a little bit of sway, woo, yeah. So at higher speeds, I'm going 62 miles an hour right now. All right, guys, so already, I can tell the truck is swaying a lot. Like, it's going side to side. And it's better than the Tundra was, but it does not hold a candle to the Silverado so far. Now, I did test a second, a third Silverado. I don't know when I'm going to post that video. I'm probably going to post it before this one, but nevertheless, that has been the best towing experience so far. This truck is swaying, and like I said, it's just, it's just not comfortable at all. I would probably skip out on using this truck for towing, like heavy like this but it definitely does handle well at lower speeds. Braking is really good. I don't know if I told you guys, I have the gain set to two and a half. If you're gonna tow with this truck, everyone says it in the comment section, weight distribution hitch is necessary. I always say this to you guys, I'm testing these trucks, so I don't really see the need to test them right now with the weight distribution hitch because I want to see how well these trucks tow without it. And then in the future, when the time comes, I'll get a weight distribution hitch and then I can give you a real world scenario of how well the trucks do without one and with one. One last thing I want to mention too, I'm driving a truck with nothing in it. There's nothing in the bed. There's nothing inside this truck. There's no passengers, nothing. So when I'm doing my testing, you have to understand that I'm doing it for about 10 minutes at most. So if you're someone 
who's planning on using this truck for towing, you have to understand that you're gonna have a bunch of stuff probably inside the truck, inside the bed, because you have a bed. And you're gonna have a different experience. So if you add about 500 pounds inside this truck, then yeah, you're gonna have some issues with overall stability. So you're gonna need a weight distribution hitch. All right guys, so I'm back on the highway one more time. I'm not getting good gas miles. I'm getting 6.4, 6.3 now, 0.2. The shifts are really good. I'm gonna just break it off at 60 miles an hour here. Now, as far as the transmission goes, you guys can hear it holding the gears when I am like accelerating. Now, even right, like right now, I'm at 3,000 RPMs. I don't know what gear I'm in, but it just shifted just now. So right now, I'm at 2,500 RPMs at 60 miles an hour. At 60 miles an hour, the trailer is handling a lot better. I don't feel as bad as it was at 65. So even just five miles an hour makes a huge difference on how well this truck handles this trailer. I mean, 9,500 pounds is a lot of weight. I know a lot of guys say it's not. It's a lot of weight. Now, if you're towing a fifth wheel, it's not a lot of weight because that weight is basically over the axles with the, when I'm, in regards to the pin weight. But for towing on the tongue like this, this is a lot of weight, guys. Like, I mean, it's a lot. And I can definitely tell that like this truck is doing a pretty good job of like handling it. Like I'm, I'm very surprised by that. Very surprised. The very last thing I want to say is if you are looking at towing, today is kind of windy. So I, I have to take that into account. Like I can see the flags here, like they're waving pretty good in the wind. And that's probably why the way that it's handling a little bit off, but that's the issue what I have with half ton trucks too is if it's a windy day or if you encounter a storm, think about the wind, think about all the variables, think about how people drive on the road. If you ever have to hit your brakes, like this truck, I mean, it is so much lighter than a heavy duty truck. I just wouldn't trust this truck for towing at max. I just wouldn't. And even at 9,000 pounds, I feel like this is a lot for this truck. And I'm not picking on Ram. I'm not picking on any of the trucks that I test. I'm just being completely honest here. Like most people are gonna tell you if they own a truck, oh, this is the greatest truck ever. You can tow 15,000 pounds. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't even do it on a farm just to move stuff around like this truck. You can see it. I'm like bouncing up back and forth because of how soft the suspension is. But overall, this truck did good. I'm actually very surprised by how well it did good. I hate to say that, but I towed with my truck and I hated it. I absolutely hated it. And this truck, maybe because of the shocks that it's using, it's probably helping a little bit, but but overall, like I said, this, this truck really did surprise me. So I'm gonna go ahead and park it, and then I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like on level ground. So just so you know, I'm not lying. If, I know you can hear the wind. They give you an idea of like how windy it was. So that's probably what I was feeling when I was having some sway on the road. So this truck did really good actually, all things considered. But as you guys can see, it's definitely squatting for the most part. I like to walk up on the truck from this view just so you have an idea of how much it's squatting. But it's definitely squatting a good bit guys. But I'm happy overall with how this truck performed and having a coil sprung suspension did not do so bad. Let's see here. Yeah, I can't really see the coils, but they're under there. I guess what I have to do now is I have to find a Ram truck with the air suspension. So one of my friends has one, but I can't seem to get him to do a video with me. He's always so busy. So hopefully in time, I'll find a used truck. If you do live in the Frederick, Maryland area or close to it, if you have a Ram 1500 with the air suspension, I'd love to test your truck out. But guys, I hope this was helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you soon. Since you stayed to the end, here are the numbers for that Ram 1500 Rebel on the spreadsheet. Curb weight's 5457, and this is for the actual truck. As you guys saw, the GVWR is 7100. 
I rounded this down just slightly at 18,283 for gross combined vehicle weight rating and 1643 for payload. 11,183 is the towing capacity. I'm 200 pounds, so here are the numbers. So all you have is 403 pounds for payload, so there's not a lot of weight here for this truck. So as I mentioned, weight distribution hitch is going to put some of that weight back on the axles on the trailer. And here's your new gross vehicle weight at 6,697. New gross combined vehicle weight at 15,607. And then towing capacity, you are good on with this trailer because as I got it weighed, it was 9,340 pounds. See you guys soon.